lots of enthusiasm around that presentation of the Star Spangled Banner. And we've got plenty more coming up. How's everybody doing today? It's another player breakdown, NBA 2K20 player breakdown. I'm playing against the Utah Jazz, so I decided to select Donovan Mitchell. Now, I could have swore Donovan Mitchell has been in the league for, it seems, five, six, seven years. This is his third season. I don't know what I was thinking. As far as why certain players, I don't understand why certain players seem like they've been playing forever. But in reality, they're in their rookie contract. I don't understand what that uh, phenomenon is. Maybe I'll never understand. But anyway, let's get into my player breakdown of Donovan Vernell. Mitchell Jr. He is a, there's a senior, Donovan Sr., his father, uh, oh, sorry, excuse me, let me correct. Donovan Vernell Mitchell Jr. was born September 7th, 1996, um, to Donovan Sr. and his mother, Nicole. Now, I read there's a article on the Players' Tribune, um, written by him and his mother, called The Dream, and it, um, talks about the upbring his upbringing, his high school, um, college stories, really, really inspirational. Um, I kind of wanted to get up and play basketball just reading the damn thing. Um, but no mention of his father in it at all. So I'm wondering if his father was distant. I didn't, also kind of didn't want to get too far involved. I don't, it's none of my business if they're still together. But he, uh, his dad is a, um, Director of Player Relations for the New York Mets, which he still has, which he still has that job, because um, it says his father served, past tense, but his father is still part of the New York Mets because there's articles um, of the whole coronavirus thing because Donovan Mitchell tested positive, and then they were saying that his father tested negative, so he's still a part of the franchise and team. Uh, he spent a lot of his childhood. Um, around the MLB and their locker rooms. So I maybe think that was a really cool thing for a kid to see how professionals act on a you know daily basis. And just the fact that you have access to Major League Baseball arenas as a little kid, that's invaluable. doesn't matter what sport. He, he grew up playing baseball as well. Um, and another little fun fact, when he was a kid in 2010, um, Donovan Mitchell, he was at the Boys and Girls Club in Greenwich. Um, not uh, Green, Greenwich? Greenwich. Greenwich, yes. Greenwich. When uh, LeBron James announced to the world he'd be going, he'd be taking his talents to South Beach. He was there. That is awesome. Just as, just that, you, that moment in sports history. And you can um, say, I, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I, I, I was there. So, um, this is a story from, this is from the article, the dream with him and his mother. Um, she said, or he said, I was running around everywhere, but like to no fixed destination for real purpose. Just running, just running, man. There's no photographic evidence, evidence of this. Thank God. And I don't even know if it's legal anymore, but when I was three or four years old, I swear to you that my mother used to put me on these little kitty leashes wherever we'd go anywhere. So apparently he had a lot of rambunctious energy. He was very extra, as the article says. Um, editor's note, and that's his mother. His mother is the like the guest editor note on this. She says, it was not a leash, it was a harness. Donovan will deny this, but I came to pick him up from daycare one day, and the lady said, you know, Donovan is always jumping up on the tables and dancing. He just hops right up there, and all the kids watch him. And I guess I should have been embarrassed, but I thought it was it was funny. Because whenever we used to go over to his grandma's house for dinner, we'd clear off the coffee table and he'd hop right up there and dance to her old records. That was our ritual. We'd have a nice little dance party, and I know Don is going to be so embarrassed that I'm saying this, but you know who... I'm saying this, but you know who we love to listen. Oh, but you know who we love to listen to? Kenny Rogers. Imagine that. This little boy dancing on a coffee table listening to Kenny Rogers. And then Donovan says, no evidence, lies. 
That was, that was his upbringing. He also says my mom would put like 500,000 miles on that old Toyota Camry. The crazy part is that she, she couldn't have cared less about basketball. And if you think I'm exaggerating, then I have a story for you. And this is kind of a funny story. The first time I dunked um, was probably the greatest day in my life. It was the summer uh, just before eighth grade. Um, we were in the layup line before the game, and it just happened. Me and my friends were going crazy, so I ran out to the parking lot after the game, and my mother was riding bikes with my little sister. And I said, Mom, you're not going to believe this. I dunked. Of course, she was like, wow, that's amazing, sweetheart. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Then we start, started driving back home, and we're on the highway, and she says, can I ask you a dumb question? What exactly makes it a dunk, sweetheart? And then Donovan Mitchell goes, this lady has been driving me around for five to six years all across the country, all across the East Coast, and she doesn't know what a dunk is. There's all these different funny stories of, um, uh, like, sports parents freaking out about their, high, their, you know, their middle school kids' games. And can you believe this? this is ridiculous. And she was just, not, couldn't be less interested. And I thought that was a really good um, kind of uh, lens to see see your kid through and what they're doing. She was just all about high, um, education, and she couldn't care less about basketball at all. Um, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. That's the, that's the center of my basketball team. I'm uh, 2K. That's funny. Donovan Mitchell, Jesus, because it says Mitchell. It always calls him Mitchell, and I don't know why. I don't. Th his name's Donovan. Donovan Mitchell. It's weird when they always say Mitchell. Um, Donovan Mitchell attended Canterbury School in Newford, um, or in New Milford, Connecticut. His first two years of high school. Um, I guess he went off. They said like a not a trade school, but it's like private school. He was sent off to. Um, his mom talks about being distant and him kind of being rambunctious and changing. And um, there's this um, interesting story about him. He broke his wrist, and then that's what got him to kind of straighten out. Um, he started acting wild. He started half-assing things. Um, he even spoke about that, like half-assing his way through school and life and all this stuff. And then he missed out. He was playing baseball, and an infield pop fly hit. And he ran to the catcher, and the catcher broke his jaw. The catcher broke their jaw, and then Donovan broke his wrist um, in the collision. And I guess he missed out on um, high school rankings, and so that affected his college scholarships. And, of course, that lit a fire under him. He couldn't – he had to um, – like, uh, what, what, what is it? Not exaggerate. I can't think of the right word, but he um, he wanted to prove himself even more after that, he said. Um, because he wasn't getting the attention or the uh, recognition for how good he thought he was at basketball. And then there's, um, let's see, blah, 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 blah. He broke his wrist. Um, his junior and senior year, his mother transferred him to Brewster Academy in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, um, making basketball his singular focus. Um, Mitchell was invited to play. See, it's weird. Calling him Mitchell is just weird. In a regional game for the Jordan Brand Classic, ranking um 27th in the country by one recruiting service and 43rd by another. So he wasn't really highly recruited coming out of um, coming out of high school. So let's see. Here. We got eight. Oh, here we. Go. I'm not even through his, his college career. We got eight minutes left. Um, yeah, he didn't. He scored 16 points, four points in his. But then his junior. They only have his junior and sophomore year of high school stats. So. And it says junior year, 16 points, and then just five games played, and that's when he broke his wrist. But then in the story, it said he broke it in the sophomore year. So there's all this conflicting, conflicting data. I'm not too sure. But here's a story about college. Um, when he went to college, he went to Louisville. Um, he thought that was the best place to get noticed by the NBA. He says, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but the truth is there were so many times when I thought about quitting basketball. Even when I was at Louisville, my freshman year, I shot 18 for 72 from the three-point line. I'll never forget that number. That's 25%. That was such an intense environment. Plus, you got to go to class. You have to handle all your business. It was a lot to handle. There were nights uh, when I used to. When I used to, yeah, there are nights when I used to go back to my dorm and lock the door and just break down. Literally sitting there, like, is this really what I want to do? 
Am I good enough? So if that guy, these are all, I love hearing these stories because if that guy doubted himself, then it's completely okay for every single person to doubt themselves. It's just the process of life. Another cool story is he showed up, um, I showed up to the gym at 1.30 in the morning and saw four of the nicest cars I've ever seen in my life in the parking lot. Um, he looked in, or sorry, sorry, I looked in and saw all these guys running full court. And he used to go to the practice um, facility in the morning, or early at night, late at night, excuse me, 1.30, and just get shots up while everyone else was practicing. While everyone else was out partying, he was sit sitting in the gym practicing, he says. So one night he saw all these basically professional looking cars, but they actually had, um, the game actually had referees. I'm looking, I'm looking, and then I'm like, is that Rajon Rondo? So Rajon Rondo and some NBA players were out there uh, playing pickup games. And then he got into a text thread, a group chat, um, their group chat, and because I guess Rondo would have these secret um, runs in the middle of the night. And then he's like, hey, who's up to play basketball? So a few times Donovan Mitchell was like, me, me. So he got to go play with NBA players. That would be the coolest, coolest thing. And I'm running out of time here. I might not get through everything. Um, let me see. He wears number 45 because of his appreciation for Michael Jordan in baseball. Um, his sophomore season in college, he had averaged 15 points, um, 2.7 assists, 5 rebounds. Shooting 46% um, percent from the floor and 35% from the three-point line and 80% from the free throw line. That's important. That's the thing that impressed me the most. Um, yeah, he, he, had, he had a good college career. Some people said he wasn't ready to come out. Um, a lot of people close to him said, you're not ready. And then he did some, I guess, workouts with Chris Paul. And Chris Paul said he was ready. So then he was like, well, then, then I'm ready. And if Chris Paul says you're ready, then you're ready. Um, he was drafted by the Denver Nuggets. Most people think the Utah Jazz got him, but originally Denver Nuggets, and he said he was depressed. He said he was a little sad that he got drafted there. But it all worked out in the end, didn't it? That's the breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed it.